Hello, this is Chris Kobe of the Portland League of Women Voters. You're watching Video Voters Guide. In conjunction with Metro East Community Media, we're here to talk with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Timothy Dubois, running for Portland City Commissioner, position one. Welcome, Timothy. Timothy, please uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, why you're running for this office, and what unique characteristics you have among all the candidates for city commissioner for this position. Okay, great. Well, thank you for having me. This is really exciting. Uh, yeah, so my name is Tim Dubois, and uh, I am a uh, carpenter by trade. I've been a carpenter for 16 years, um, sorry, 18 years. Uh, I'm also a, a husband and a father of two uh, young boys, four and six. Uh, one attends um, Llewellyn Elementary uh, Public School and the other will uh, in the fall. Uh, I have also spent the last nine years going from only a high school degree to uh, getting a master's degree and that I'll complete in June in urban and regional planning and that's something I'm really excited about and very proud of as well. Uh, what I think makes me unique uh, is that, well for one, my degree uh, provides a um, much needed perspective in city council. Certainly it's, it's well represented in the, um, uh, uh, you know, in the employees of um, Portland, but uh, uh, we do not carry that currently in our city council. And I would like to provide that. Uh, additionally, I, um, uh, I like to think that uh, having spent 18 years in a working class um, uh, job, uh, I can bring sort of that different perspective uh, uh, to city council and I, I hope for that opportunity. Thank you, Timothy. Um, we are in very tumultuous times. The pandemic and the effects of the resulting devastation of small businesses, city employee layoffs, and housing displacements will be with us for some time. How would you seek to address this fallout and the reduction in city revenue? Yeah. Well, thank you for this question. Uh, this is definitely a very difficult time. And uh, I would say that primarily we're already um, uh, too late on this, the kind of stuff that needs to have happened should have been a standard operating procedure. And that simply means basically a line item budget analysis and, and audit of our city government. We should be fiscally responsible regardless of whether it's good times or bad times so that we have room to breathe in this type of crisis. Uh, but it's too late for that now. So it's going to mean that in the coming budget years uh, that we are a little bit more aggressive in that line item analysis and audit. Uh, we're going to have to make difficult decisions. It is going to affect people, their jobs, uh, benefits, and we should always have a focus on equity uh, and make sure that those who um, actually are doing fine and who are going to weather this, uh, you know, don't get a disproportionate amount of um, uh, recovery dollars. Uh, so yeah, I think basically it's uh, actually, uh, I would like to add that I think that's one of my advantages for running for office is that I do not hope or, or expect to have a long political career. And this may be one of those terms where whoever gets in there is going to have to do some very unpopular things uh, and it might scuttle their future uh, political prospects. And I'm willing to make those difficult decisions because I know it's the right thing to do. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, if, we, if we maintain our current city government structure, what city bureau would you want to oversee and why? Certainly there's many, uh, but they, they typically focus on the planning and the built environment. So I, I think uh, that uh, if, I, if I may just maybe put a top two, the planning and sustainability and uh, development services, I think um, it would be really very uh, nice to have someone uh, support planning sustainability, someone who knows the language, who knows the difficulties that they face uh, and the financial challenges they have. I have many friends and acquaintances who already are in that, um, uh, in that department and I know what their complaints are and um, I, I don't even have my degree yet, I'm very close, but they're all very predictable. Uh, and then development services really goes hand in hand because you can dream up all the fancy things we, we want in planning sustainability, uh, but we live in a world where the private sector really delivers um, delivers those dreams, and we need to really have uh, a really 
a coherent line of communication between those those departments and um, I'm not sure that's exactly happening right now. One of the uh, other areas where a city of course provides services is law enforcement. How would you address the public's concerns about police community relations, the use of deadly force and officer accountability? Well, this is uh, definitely a, a very important topic, uh, and it will always be an uh, important topic. Um, this is a very challenging problem in that we need police. They, they serve a very important role, and Portland uh, nationally has the lowest of, of middle to large cities, uh, the lowest per capita police force. Uh, in an, in a, one of the consequences of that is our police are overworked, a uh, lot of overtime that has cost to us as well. Um, and in that type of environment, it can be easier to make bad decisions. With that being said, I am accountable for the mistakes I make in my life, and they should as well. Um, so certainly there needs to be a step up in a police accountability. And I think I would, I not, not only would I support that, I think we can get the police department on board with that. Um, but yeah, primarily, uh, yeah, you know, I'm sorry, I don't really have anything else. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Last question, the city's park system faces serious financial challenges, even more so since the closures caused by the pandemic. What ideas do you have for securing the financial stability of our park system? So this is a very important topic to me. Uh, I have a lot to say, and but um, I'm not going to say it all here. I think there's a few things I would like to highlight. Uh, primarily, uh, it is ill-advised that we subsidize high earners' um, kids' uh, swim classes. And so what I mean by that is uh, it has been my experience um, that uh, – swim classes, pre-K, they fill up immediately. They're typically filled with kids who come from privilege. Uh, and it just shows that they are getting a discount. We should charge what they can afford and then take that additional revenue to stabilize the park department and then to provide subsidies for those who actually need it. Uh, I don't need subsidize, I don't need the taxpayers of Portland to subsidize my kids' swim classes in pre-K. Uh, but I know there's people who do and you can charge me more and I can help them. I think that's one strategy uh, that we can take. Uh, finally, um, I would like to highlight just the idea that we could probably expand our commercialization of parks. And what do I mean by that? I think uh, when I go to Selwood Park, how fantastic it would be if I could just get a, a hamburger and a shake there while I sit there and watch um, my kids play in the playground. It's not a strip mall. It's not selling out our parks. It's about having strategic, um, uh, just, just kind of like Director's Park downtown. It has just a little bit of commercialization. Uh, it's got a very nice bathroom that's clean, it's maintained. Uh, and I think we can bring a little bit of that to our parks and, and, and get them to sort of uh, help subsidize uh, the maintenance and operations of our parks. Okay. Timothy, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. This has been the Video Voter's Guide. Um, the primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and ballot measures and exercise your right to vote. Thank you for watching.